You may have been asked to solve a linear system and potentially by graphing. Now, when would you be asked to do this? Well, pretty much when your teacher asks. Hi, I'm Mr. Brash. This guy down here is Mr. Squirrel, and we've been recording some math lessons along the way here. So what exactly is a linear system? Let's break this down. Well, a linear just means it's a line. So it's a straight line. So uh, one or more. And that's where the word system comes into play. A computer system is actually made up of multiple computer pieces. And so we're going to have one or more lines. So you know what, let's, uh, let's type that in. So we'll say uh, one, uh, actually two or more, sorry, two or more straight lines on the same graph. Great, so two or more lines on the same graph is all well and good. Uh, but what is solving them? Uh, so if we have a, a graph and we've got a, a Cartesian plane, so I'll just, I'll just work with uh, this right here for an example. And if I was asked what is the solution if I had two lines, two or more lines on that same thing here. So let's just draw a line like uh, maybe from here to here, and then I'll draw another line from here to here. Now these are line segments, but that's okay. We'll just pretend like they are lines moving on for ever, ever and ever. So what is the solution to a linear system? A solution is the point of intersection. It is where they cross. So where the lines intersect or cross. There is a very specific point. We want to know the X and Y of that particular point. In my drawing up here, it would be this point right in there. All right, now that might be hard to read on a graph and we're gonna talk about in future videos how you might do it when it's uh, really hard to read. But hopefully it's nice, easy, whole numbers. Okay, so how can we find the solution? There are three major ways to find the solution in sort of what we'll be doing in my series of videos. Now the first way we're going to do it is we are going to uh, graph the two lines directly and read off the graph. So read off, I don't know why I'm writing this one but type to the other ones the graph. It's just the way I work. Right, Mr. Squirrel? All right, so that's what a linear system is and how we can solve them. Let's put it into practice. So I've got a linear system here, two lines on the same graph, and we want to know what is the solution to this linear system? Well, the solution, again, is where they intersect. So that would be right here. They're intersecting at the point 3, 2 an x of three and a y of two, and that is their solution. Some people would like to actually have a therefore statement or some sort of final statement to that. So you could say the solution is, and then give the point, and you can even label the point with a letter if you really want to. Okay, what if we don't have a graph, we don't have an equation to graph, and we're using a table of values? Well, we fill in the table of values as best we can and hope that we get matching points. Here I have a first equation, x plus y equals five. Here's some x values, let's fill it in. An x of one, if I brought that over and subtracted on both sides, y would have to be five minus one. So this would be a y value of four, probably better in a darker color. If I plug a two into that x value, I would subtract two on both sides, I'd get a y of five take away two, which is three. If I put a three in for the x, subtracted on both sides, five take away three is two. We're going to do the same thing on the next table of values. It's a different equation. Put a 1 in there. 2 minus 1 is 1. Put a 2 in. 4 minus 1 is 3. Put a 3 in. 6 minus 1 is 5. Now, do we have a set of matching points? If I take a look at uh, these two right here, 1 and 4, 1 and 1, they don't match. 2 and 3, 2 and 3, they match. So this right here is a matching point on both systems. We didn't have to graph it. We can see that that is going to be the solution. So the solution is an x of two and a y of three. Now, when you're solving by graphing, here's just a couple steps to keep in mind. You wanna graph each on the same grid. That's pretty obvious, right? You wanna locate the point of their intersection. And with a hand-drawn graph, it might not be super awesome to see. So, you know, hand drawing is gonna go by the wayside when we have our digital tools. Now to verify your solution, you might be asked to check or verify your solution. What we need to do is we need to put the substitution, that point of intersection, uh, we need to substitute that back into each equation and see if it actually works. We call that satisfying the equations if it actually makes the left side equal the right side. Let's take a look at an example of that. 
So if we're going to use this graph below, what are the equations of each line is what we've been asked. Okay, so we have to get the equation of, let's call this line 1. We'll call this line 2. So let's get the equation of line 1. We know we have a y-intercept at negative 2. And we have to get our slope. We could even just count to get our slopes here. So my first equation is going to be y equals a slope of 3 over 1, x minus 2. My second equation is going to have an equation of y-intercept is here at 5, and the slope seems to be negative 1 over 2. So negative 1 over 2x plus 5. Great, I have the two equations. What is the solution to this system? The solution, and short form that you can write for solution is kind of like this, SOL apostrophe N, is, what's our solution? 2, 4, right there. Hard to see the yellow on that, but 2, 4, so it's 2 and 4. Is this graph technically complete? Is the labeling complete on it and everything like that? And some would say no, which is why I put my labels on here. The one main thing that I think it could use is arrows on the ends of the lines here. Those lines technically go on forever and ever, but it does have a scale, and I did label the lines. So other than that, it's pretty good. Now, what if we were asked to verify this solution? You know, we were asked, what are the equations? What if I was asked to verify the solution? So what we would do is we would take our two and our four and plug those into the equations. So we're gonna take that x value of two and we're gonna put it in to x here. So three times two is six, six take away two is four. Did I get four? Yes, I did. Let's plug it into the next one. Negative a half times two. Negative a half times two is negative one. Negative one plus five is four. So I got four again, so it works. This is the right point of intersection for those two lines. So we're going to see that again in this next example. We've been asked to solve the following linear system by graphing on the same grid and clearly identify the point of intersection. Be sure to satisfy all of our graphing and labeling requirements and verify our solution. Now it sounds like a lot, but it's not gonna be as difficult as you might think. Now these equations are not in y equals mx plus b format. There are several ways to graph lines. You could use your points of intersection, a table of values, all of those things. I'm gonna put this into y equals mx plus b format. So I'm just gonna bring the two x and the 10 over. I'm gonna subtract them on both sides or add them as the case is needed. And then I will divide both sides by the negative five. And so I get a slope of two fifths and a b value of negative two. So that's my first equation. I'll call that equation one. And if I want to, I can go ahead and graph it right now. I'll try and graph it with a darker color. So I've got a y-intercept of negative two and a slope of two over five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And we will uh, use our you know, straight edge and we'll do our best to draw uh, some sort of straight line. I don't have a ruler on me with the system that I'm using here. So you are going to have to watch me horribly graph with chicken scratches this line. Uh, Salomon Khan from Khan Academy uh, sure does a better job than I do here. So that would be my first equation. So we've labeled it, we've got all the points we need, everything like that. Now we're gonna take a look at our second equation. Again, I'm gonna get y all by itself. I will subtract the x on both sides and add the five on both sides. So that one was particularly easy, so we'll call that equation two. I've got a y-intercept of five and a slope of negative one. So down one, everywhere we go. And so we're actually going to immediately see the point of intersection or solution. I'm just gonna connect the dots. Again, I apologize for the sort of chicken scratch line. One of these days I'll figure out how to do a nice perfectly straight line in this program that's not horizontal or vertical. And the point of intersection or the solution is right in front of us here is the point five, zero and they wanted us to verify that solution. So in order to verify that solution, I'm going to check it. I'm actually gonna tell the reader I'm doing a check. The work that I'm doing right down here is not new sort of solution work, it's just checking. I would like to see if I get a zero for my y value when I plug a five in for my x value. All right, uh, so these fives are gonna cancel. If you are aware of how sort of the multiplication and division of fractions work, two times five is 10, 10 divided by five is two. So the two is the one that sticks around. So what I have is zero equals two minus two, which in fact is true. This is a left side equals right side scenario. 
So it works in the first equation. That was equation one. We are also going to check in equation two. We have to. All right, so I'm going to see if I get a zero when I plug in five for my x value. Well, negative five plus five is in fact zero. So I get another left side equals right side scenario. And so this is in fact the correct solution. Therefore, the solution is five zero and we're good to go. One last example is more of a word problem scenario here. Jenna is planning her dad's retirement party. How kind of her. She compares the cost of different rental halls to host this party. There's two rental halls we're going to check out here. Family Stone Hall. They charge $200. That's called a flat fee. Plus $15 a guest. Memory Hall charges $100. That's their flat fee. Plus $20 per guest. They want us to write an equation for the cost of Family Stone Hall. So. Whenever you're asked to create an equation from a word problem, you should do let statements. So here we have let C represent the cost and G represent the number of guests. So C is the cost. This is for family stone hall here. So my cost is going to be a flat fee of $200 and $15 per guest where G is the number of guests. Now, if we were to swap this around, we would see that this is actually the equation of a line where I've got a slope of 15, and a y-intercept of 200. We have been asked in part C to graph both of these lines. So if I really wanted to, I could graph it right now. I've got a y-intercept of 200. The yellow on the white's not working so great, is it? So let's try and just darken that up here with green. That's even worse. And so we'll go with the blue, perfect. And then we're gonna go up 15. Well, how do I go up 15 on a scale like this? After 10, I would be going up 150. So let's do that. So at an X of 10 or a G of 10, that'd be 150 plus 200. That's 350. Here's 300. Here's 350. I'm going to go up another 150 for the next 10, another 150 for the next 10, the next 150 here. So we can see that that is the speed at which the cost for that haul goes up. And that is the first equation, Family Stone Hall. Now we have to write an equation for the next one called Memory Hall. Okay, so that's a very similar scenario. It's going to be the cost. So we'll call this equation two. The cost is going to be $100 plus $20 per guest. $100 plus $20 per guest. Again, we can flop that around so that it's $20 per guest plus 100. That's a y-intercept of 100 and it goes up 20 for every guest. So if I get to 10 guests, it's actually gonna go up 200. So one, two, every 10, one, two. And there we have our point of intersection. A little bit easy to see there at 20, 500. And so if I just finish my work here, connect, connect my dots, and graphing by hand is not a fun thing to do. So we're gonna use technology whenever we get the chance. And furthermore, if you watch my next videos, we're gonna solve this stuff without even having to graph. We'll do it algebraically. So it says here to find the point of intersection and label the ordered pair on your graph. So I've done that right here, 2,500. What does this point of intersection represent? Well, what it represents is that at 20 guests, both halls will cost $500. If we ask for more than 20 guests, or if we have more than 20 guests coming, one of those halls will be more expensive than the other. And as a matter of fact, it says here, when is it better to use the Family Stone Hall? Family Stone Hall is my blue graph. It's the first one here. It is more advantageous to rent from Family Stone Hall if you're going to be inviting more than 20 guests, because you can see it becomes less expensive than the other one. However, Memory Hall is going to be less expensive, that's the red line, is going to be less expensive if you have less than 20 guests. If you know you're gonna have 20 on the dot, it really doesn't matter which one you use. And that's actually how people will choose a rental hall for different scenarios that they're doing or even cell phone plans.
Okay, so that's solving linear systems by drawing their graphs. Obviously, this requires the skill of being able to graph lines. Hopefully, you can use some technology, whether it's Desmos or whatever tools you have under your tool belt, to get the graphs on the screen for you so that you don't have to waste your time, uh, you know, finicking around with pencils on graph paper. I think we're a little bit past that at this point. My name is Mr. Brash. If you have any questions, you should know how to contact me. This little guy down here is Mr. Squirrel. He really liked this video, so he's a happy guy, and I hope you have a great day.